this is a solenoid. A solenoid is a single wire that has been wrapped into something that is a cylinder. Right? So we have a cylindrical um, shell here, and we've wrapped this wire around it. Now, it might look like there's only one layer of wiring, but there's actually several layers of uh, coated wire on here, and I don't know how many layers. Um, well, actually, typically I do, but anyway. Um, it's not it's not published, but whatever. Uh, anyway, it's got several layers of wire in it. And we're gonna talk about what happens and what the purpose of this solenoid is. So if we look at a cross section of our solenoid, we have, but by cross section, what I mean is if we were to take this solenoid and we were to cut it along here, right down this middle part, cut it right along that part, we're gonna talk about what you would see from this side. You would have a bunch of wires on the top and a bunch of wires on the bottom. Now, each of these wires are actually the same wire. We're just talking about different pieces of that wire. And the current that goes into the board in this wire, these are supposed to be a bunch of X's. Sorry, I got a little bit small. This, the current going into the board here would be current coming out of the board up here because each of these currents is going this way throughout this solenoid. So when you look at this, we need to use the right hand rule to figure out the direction of the magnetic field. What digit do we start with, Gary? The thumb. So let's start at the bottom. Let's start with just this one right here. Our thumb points into the board. Fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. Notice that above this wire, the magnetic field is to the right. Ooh, let's use colors. We have, from the bottom, we have magnetic field that's going to be going to the right. Magnetic field that's going to be going to the right. On this side, that magnetic field is actually going to be going to the left. Now. We can do this for each and every one of these wires. When we do that, you're gonna have components from each one that are gonna cancel out, and in the end, it ends up being all completely horizontal because the different components of these are going to, they're gonna cancel one another other out. The Y components is gonna be completely horizontal. Everybody see that? If we now look at the magnetic field from the top wire, the top wire has current coming out Therefore, the magnetic field is going to be this way. That is, above the wire, the magnetic field is going to be to the left. And below the wire, the magnetic field is going to be to the right. In other words, what is the total magnetic field surrounding the solenoid class? Zero. Zero. An ideal solenoid has a magnetic field outside the solenoid, which is equal to zero. This, just so you know, is an ideal solenoid. Or at least we're gonna treat it to be one. And you will be able to do experiments to tr prove that it's actually not. Not yet, we get to the next chapter, but that's fine. Okay, ideal solenoid, uh, and so the magnetic field is only on the inside of the solenoid and is a constant magnetic field. And we are going to figure out the value of that magnetic field. So again, I'm going to draw this just so we can see it here. We have our solenoid. We have current going into the board and out of the board. And our magnetic field is constant and to the right, and the magnetic field here, out here, is zero. What we're going to go do is we're going to use Ampere's law to figure out the, magne the magnitude of the magnetic field which is inside the solenoid. So it is B dot Vs, the closed loop integral, 
is equal to the, the mu naught times the current inside. Michael, in order to use Ampere's law, what's our next step? We have to draw an Ampere in loop. Now, when we pick our Ampere in loop shape, so far all we've done were circles. Our goal here is to get this stuff to work out. We need the magnetic field to be constant so we can bring it out, and we need theta to either be 0 or 90. If theta is 0, we have, or 180 degrees, if you will. So if, if the Ampere loop has a cosine of 0, that would be 1, or a cosine of 90 would give us 0. So the shape of our Ampere loop is going to look like this. It is a rectangle or square, it doesn't really matter. And it looks like this. This is our Ampere loop. We have a bunch of different sides to our Ampere loop. We have side 1, side 2, side 3, and side 4. We now have to figure out the total, because what this is going to be is the loop integral b dot ds for side 1 plus b dot ds for side 2, b dot ds for side 3, b dot ds for side 4 is equal to mu naught times the current on the inside. Because in order to have a closed loop, we need all four sides. 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all 0. Who can explain why one of them is 0? One, I'm sorry, 2, 3, or 4, they're all 0. Travis. Because pick one, yeah, because they're, the, the reasons are different depending on which one you pick. Well, for 2 and 4, don't they have a theta of 90? For 2 and 4, the theta is going to be 90 degrees. And the cosine of 90 is 0. The angle between the Ampere loop, which is going to be the direction of ds, and the direction of the magnetic field, is 90 degrees. Good. Jenkins. For three, there's no magnetic field because it's outside the loop. Outside the loop, solenoid. outside the solenoid, the magnetic field is equal to zero. Therefore, this works out to just be the integral of b dot ds for loop or side one, I guess is what we should call it. Side you not current on the inside. Okay, so side one. Um, we already know the magnetic field is constant, so we can bring that out. So B integral ds times the cosine of, and the angle between ds and B is going to be zero degrees, so the cosine of zero is equal to mu naught times the current on the inside. So B. Now, the integral of ds is just going to be the total length of our Ampere loop, which is just L. We'll just define it right now as L. So B times L equals mu naught times the current on the inside. OK. Now, the current inside the Ampere loop Well, the current inside the Ampere loop is going to be the current in the wire times however many loops, however many circles are inside the Ampere loop, right? Because we have one, two, three, we can count them, right? So we have V times L equals mu naught times N. This is called the number of terms, note that is a capital N, as in the number of terms, times I, the current. Where L, we're, we're going to set L equal to the length of the entire uh, solenoid, because clearly we want to use the entire solenoid, not just part of it. So what we end up with here is the magnetic field is 
is equal to mu naught capital N times the current divided by L, the length of the solar. Actually, I'll use a little bit lower case L, length of the solar. Okay, please find this equation on your equation sheet. That's, a, that's Ampere's law, right? I'm looking for specifically the, the equation is on there. It's not quite the same for the magnetic field that exists inside a solenoid. Jenkins. Is it uh, B in the subtract of S? Okay. Equals um, <laughs> yes. I, little n times I. Times I. Mr. Palmer, that's what John just said. I'm sorry, did I misunderstand? Yeah. I apologize, John. <laughs> Uh, times, uh, I thought you had said Ampere's law. So. so now, there is a subtle distinction here between the lowercase n and the capital N. n is the number of turns. Lowercase n is called the turn density. Because we don't have enough densities. It is the current turn density. It is the number of loops per length the turn density, turns per length, turns per meter. 